Good morning. If you want to see how we built this uh, deck table, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. Well, welcome to another Memphis Money, Memphis Money 283. Boy, I wish I could uh, see the intro, uh, see how this project turned out because it's going to be pretty exciting, I think. We're going to build a uh, deck table, you know, to put drinks and stuff on. Uh, it's going to have splayed angle legs, uh, completely new design. Uh, and we're going to try to coat the top with resin. I ran out of epoxy and I'm going to try just regular uh, resin. I'm not sure about the chemical formula, but let's forget about that and let's knock off the chit chat and get to work. I made us a prototype here to uh, get us started. We'll take a look at that in a minute. It's got the splayed ankle legs. But I want to put a resin covered top on our final piece we're going to build today. Here's that top. What I've done is I've chalked it up here a little bit because I, I put some, this is exterior plywood and I put trim around the edges and left about an eighth of an inch proud all the way around so that I could pour the resin right on there. This is the stuff we're going to try to use. Uh, they don't call it epoxy because it isn't. I don't know, it's some other plastic chemicals. You usually use it for car repairs and stuff, but uh, you can use it on boats. Now I'm thinking this uh, scheme has almost zero chance of succeeding, so we're just going to jump into it. Uh, I got the directions say that a full tube of this hardener is good for a half a can. So I'm going to dump out what I think is a half a can into this uh, container here. Kind of mix it up real good because I'll be mixing it up on the uh, surface here. Here's the second batch. It's spilled over the edge in places. What I'm going to do is paint it on this trim. Make it look like I planned it that way. You're not going to tell anybody, are you? Since I don't have any uh, faith in this technique, I cut out another top as a backup. And if this, uh, if that resin doesn't work, I got some of this um, epoxy clear coating kit for uh, garage floors. Came out all right, I guess, uh, but it's not clear. You can't, you can't see through it right. Um, let's use that epoxy. Here's our other tabletop that I just showed you. You can make sure that it's, it's uh, this stuff. It's not for, uh, it's not for tabletops. It's for garage floors. Well, we're going to try it on a tabletop anyway, since we got it. I'm supposed to mix it in this bag, but we're not going to do that either. I'm just going to clip the corner off and put it in this container and mix it up. Better mix this before it starts getting lumpy. So for all you uh, clear coat epoxy guys, they're going to tell us that they use the wrong stuff. Oh, we already know that, so you don't have to tell us. <laughs> Point of that is just so much better. That's exactly what I'm looking for. 
And I don't know how long, how deep you're allowed to put this uh, garage sort of sealer. This is probably an eighth of an inch thick. We'll find out. Now, like here's the uh, here's the clear epoxy. It uh, didn't turn out great. I'll show you that later, but we're going to have to use it. Um, let's go look at the prototype. Well, now the prototype has a proper sized top on it. Um, you know, this probably this stuff probably would have worked if I'd put some coloring in it. Um, but anyway, you can see how the legs uh, slope out, and let's get it up on the table. And here's our top for our our actual project. Okay, the first thing we're gonna build is this frame here, and this is a lot different than any other frame we've made. This frame is flared out and the legs are attached differently. Now for this frame to splay out, the pieces have to originally be cut with these duplicate five degree angles. This is an end view of our stock. Five degrees isn't very much, but when you carry it out through the length of the leg, it's quite a splay. see the all the frame pieces are at five degrees uh, now for the tricky part we have to put a 45 degree angle on each one of these pieces so that they'll meet in a splayed miter now you can get turned around and put the angle going in the wrong direction so what I like to do is set the frame up and then take one piece off at a time so I don't I don't mess it up now to make this miter, you got to make sure your angle there is sitting flat against the flank frame. If you put it up against the backstop, you see that there's a gap in there. You can't cut it that way. It has to be flat against the bed of your saw. Now having that wood angle like that, uh, it can go south on you real quick because you got a gap in here. So your, the bottom of your wood is not up against the fence. So I got this little angled spacer in here to take up the room. And I got it attached with a quick grip clamp. So that when I make the cut, if anything weird happens, I won't be there. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Okay, there's one side of the splayed angle and now I got to do this side over here um, I think I'm gonna make it about 17 inches uh, it's not critical um, but I just need to make all four of them the same well there's one now I just make three more just like it and we'll be on a roll Got the frame pieces done. <clears throat> um, I won't take you along for it, but I'm gonna I'm going to round over the edges here and put some pocket holes in the uh, frame. And what I'm doing here, and this is uh, one of those give me a break moments. I'm marking where I want to round over with this green marker because these boards will only go one way 
and it's very easy to get over at the router and get to thinking about something else and round over the wrong edge. Additionally, you can see these little pencil marks here. Uh, that's where the pocket holes are going to go um, because the same problem you can get switched around and put them going up the wrong way. It's not the end of the world, but it's irritating. Hold the uh, miters together with uh, screws and some glue. This glue is not going to work very well. I think I'm just putting it on here for habit. The reason it won't work is this wood is too wet. Wood glue doesn't work on wet wood. I don't know what the limit is, but I'm just going to put a couple of staples in it for right now, and then we're going to put screws in it. I'm holding these miters together with these uh, stainless steel deck screws. The notion on this thing is I suspect it's going to be left out in the rain. That's the reason I'm making it out of deck wood. And all the fasteners will be either stainless steel or coated or galvanized. We've got our splayed angle frame here. That's this part right here. Now we need to make these uh, splayed angled legs. Let me show you how we do that. This is stock we'll be using for the legs. And what we got to do is we got to put a 45 degree miter cut on one side and we've got to narrow it to five inches. It's currently five and a half. I'm going to tack these things together with with glue and some long brads. I may uh, put screws in them later because this wood is over the limit for dampness. those dilemmas. This glue is not really going to hold real good so I really need some kind of fasteners but I don't want metal fasteners to be showing so what I'm doing is I'm inserting uh, beach dowels in the corners they get wet they'll swell they swell with glue and they swell with water too so this will be I think a good solution well we got our legs uh, fastened together with the 45s but of course they're standing straight up and down that's not the way we want them we want them splayed out at uh, five degrees which means that we need to put a five degree angle cut uh, down here at the uh, down here at the bottom now we'll make that cut on the tape on the uh, chop saw but what I'll do here is I'll rock this thing back the angle we want and then I'll just make uh, you know some a notional cut here so I don't mess it up Here on the chop saw, I'll 
take this thing and slide it over to five degrees. It's not very much, but in a 29 inch leg, it's quite a bit. Now for this thing to work, it really has to be level. So I've added this piece of plywood uh, because this is wider than my fence down here and that'll keep it steady. I measured in three quarters of an inch right here and I'll do that on all of them so that they'll all be, have the same cut. Okay, if, my, if this scheme is right, this thing should splay. Now to make things even more complicated, I've got to cut that same angle on the other end so that my leg will sit flat on the full floor. So I move this whole contraption down. So we've got our splayed angles there. Uh, now we need to taper, taper these legs. So what I've done here is I've just uh, traced uh, the uh, outline of the taper I want and I'm going to cut it out with the jigsaw and then I'll use this part uh, that I take out as a template for all the rest. So I need to make sure this first cut is really neat. So the cut is uh, kind of random, but if I use the same cutout for all of them, it won't be random anymore because it'll all be the same. So there's our leg, now we just have to attach it. But what we're going to do is these legs sit flush up against this splayed frame and we're going to put galvanized bolts through and connect it on both sides. This will make the thing ridiculously strong. Now these bolts are hot dipped, galvanized, they're about the best weatherproofing we can do. And there you have it, just about the strongest leg you could possibly have. It's not appropriate for most things, but for uh, deck furniture and uh, you know, shop tables and stuff. If you want a really strong leg, this is a good takeaway. Go ahead and uh, attach the frame to the top here. And we'll flip it over on the floor and see how much we have to trim off the legs to make it sit straight. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the strongest table in the world or the heaviest. It might be both. It might be a double record holder. Well, it sits okay. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna sand. Uh, I'm gonna sand this trim down a little bit, and then put some stain on it, and we'll take a look at it. Uh, we're running out of time, so we'll. I'll do the uh, staining offline. I 
I know we're <clears throat> flat out of time, but one more quick look at the how this thing is set up. Uh, you put the splayed angle frame in place, uh, attach it with uh, pocket holes, and then you do your splayed angled legs. I showed you how to do that, and those just bolt with carriage bolts right into this frame. Uh, that makes you know these this table just uh, indestructible and be great for a shop table, you know, a camping table, or not a camping table because it's too heavy. But this is going to be used on a uh, on a deck. Well, here's our uh, little deck table for uh, Memphis Monday. What is it? 283. Um, we made it out of deck wood. We tried to put a uh, we tried to put a, a a you know a a, sh a shiny plastic top on it a you know a bar a bar top on it didn't work uh, we got an F on it we got a failing grade because it's too wavy um, lessons learned is you don't use and we knew that when we started you don't use uh, garage floor epoxy to do clear coating on your tabletops. They make stuff for that. Problem is they don't sell it locally and I wanted to do it now. Well, it does it for another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 283. Uh, the way I figure it is if you don't fail every now and then in a project, uh, then you don't have anything to compare it to when you do when you think you did well. Um, I think the, the, the table was fine, but that resin uh, that epoxy we put on the top was the wrong stuff. So in the comments, you're going to tell me that's the wrong stuff. But uh, those people aren't watching this part of the video anyway. Uh, I know it's the wrong stuff. I just wanted to try it anyway. Um, but it didn't work. Period. F. All right. Uh, like, share, comment, all the stuff you do on the Internet. Most important. Make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. And I promise, well, I won't promise, but I'll hope it's a more successful project. Thanks for playing along.